This episode of G News is brought to you by the Toyota Corolla. Let's lead the way. I want to chase my dreams. If only I could remember what they were. Hey Dreamers, Julian here for D News. Dreams are weird. One minute you're falling asleep, the next you have to build a go-kart with your ex-landlord. This is of course assuming you remember your dreams, which many people, myself included, don't. And it's not that we're not having dreams. Everybody dreams every night, mostly when our brains are in the stage of sleep known as rapid eye movement. REM is the fourth and final stage, and it's drastically different from the three before it. During the first three, your pulse slows, your muscles relax, and unless you're Philip J. Fry, your brain is producing the delta brain wave, meaning the oscillating electrical voltages are at their slowest, firing zero to four times per second. People who are woken during non-REM sleep report dreams less often, and when they do, they're less vivid or emotional. After about an hour of sleep, REM kicks in and things change. Your brain waves speed up to the alpha wavelength of eight to 13 hertz, just like it does when you're awake. Your eyes flash around, heart rate and breathing speed up, but the rest of your muscles are paralyzed when your brain releases glycine and an inhibitory neurotransmitter called gamma aminobutyric acid, or GABA. These two amino acids keep signals from your brain from reaching your motor neurons. You've probably felt their lingering effects if you've ever tried to make a fist when you wake up. People who've experienced sleep paralysis know a much more extreme and terrifying experience when they wake up frozen thanks to these two chemicals. But you wouldn't want a lack of them either or you'd have REM behavior disorder where you'd act out all your dreams. Now, contrary to myth, there is no danger in waking a sleepwalker. They won't freak out when they wake up and start attacking you. It would be the same as waking up somebody in the middle of normal REM sleep, whereas letting a sleepwalker stay asleep can be very dangerous. Mike Birbiglia, a comedian and sleepwalker, has to sleep in a zipped up sleeping bag wearing mittens after he jumped through a window one night. So you're definitely dreaming when you're in REM, and you typically should have four to six REM cycles per night, totaling to over two hours of dreaming. Why do we not remember it at all? Or if we do, why is holding onto the memory like catching smoke rings? Well, the truth is, nobody knows, but we have theories. One idea is that memories are formed through association and repetition. Because dreams are so random and usually a one-off, we don't store them in long-term memory and they quickly fade away. This idea would explain why recurring dreams are so much easier to remember, because we see them more often and so become familiar with them. It's also possible the rolling sleep cycle and changes in your brainwave speed inhibit your normal ability to form memories. It's believed that when people do remember their dreams, it's only their last one, which makes sense because toward the end of the night you spend much more time in REM and hardly any time in the middle stages where your brain activity is slowest. The fact that people deprived of REM sleep tend to have trouble recalling things they learned when they were awake also supports this idea. Sidebar, this is why staying up all night to cram before a test is generally a bad idea. You'll retain information you studied much better if you get a full night's sleep. If you don't remember what you see in REM, it's not the end of the world as we know it. In fact, it might be a sign you feel fine because people who fall asleep stressed report remembering their dreams more often. And 75% of dreams reported in sleep labs or dream journals tend to have negative content. Whether it's because the scary dreams are easier to remember or because anxious people wake up more during the night and so are likely to be fresh out of REM, we don't know. Dreams are a fascinating phenomenon, but they're still a big question mark in the scientific community. We don't really know why we dream, and we're not 100% on why we even need to sleep. Anthony covers the prominent theories in this video down here. Do you remember your dreams? What do you think your dreams do for you? Well, let us know in the comments or find me on Twitter at jhug00, and I'll see you next time on D News. This episode of D News is brought to you by the Toyota Corolla. Let's lead the way.